you guys is up, Scottish Duck here once again. Right, Wii games. Let's do it, shall we? Uh, you may notice that uh, the hood is actually coming down today. Uh, it was kind of starting to annoy me a little bit, you know. Uh, but somebody actually commented one of my last collection updates there, saying that the hood uh, actually reminded them of Spax 3. And all of a sudden, a wave of PTSD that's been like residing in me for the past like 13 years came back all at once. And I'm just like, okay, the hood's going, okay? You can all comment about the bald spot all you want. The hood's going. So yeah. Wii games. Now, any chance I get, I will always say this, right? The Wii is my favorite Nintendo console, right? I think I like saying that because it's actually like so controversial, especially the day now that the Switch is like thriving and obviously whenever something new comes along that's good, anything that came before it is utter shite. You know, that's just the way people on the internet that play video games function. And now the Wii is like, aside from this massive success that really uh, opened up the box with new control schemes, now it's just this shit console with a gimmicky controller that your grand liked to play. And everybody just doesn't remember all the great games on it. Well, hopefully this collection update will remind you, because I have a lot of Wii games, we have a lot of ground to cover. This is going to be a long video, so let's just jump right in. Okay. First of all, I'm going to talk about a few big boxes that I have. Uh, we'll just get through these quick. And uh, this one, this is quite, to start this off, this is quite a rare game, not a lot of people have this. Uh... Mario Kart Wii, yeah, extremely rare, extremely uncommon, you know, and it comes, it's complete with the plastic wheel, how rare, you know? Uh, yeah, this is, um, I think everybody has this game. Probably one of my, definitely one of my least favourite Mario Karts, to be honest. I did play a lot of it, but it's one, the thing that uh, I always come back to with Mario Kart Wii is how annoying a lot of the new items were you know it's definitely the mario kart like it's kind of a normal thing in the series that you could go from like first place to last place in an instant but nowhere is that more prevalent than in this one in my opinion so it's kind of one of my least favorites as a result but you know you're not supposed to play mario kart competitively anyway but okay mario kart um, here's uh, Red Steel 2. I remember I picked this up for the uh, Wii Motion Plus and damn good game this one. Only ever played it through once. I actually remember I did own Red Steel 1 back in the day when it was a launch title for the friggin Wii. Uh, that was fun. That was alright. Bit rough around the edges but it was alright but this one's definitely better. It's a shame it never really went anywhere after this. The controls were really good with the Wii Motion Plus uh, as well. Okay. Um, here we have Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, um, a Zelda game that has sadly completely missed the Zelda cycle, you know, like, or rather it went into the Zelda cycle but it didn't really get out of it because, again, it's just because, probably because Breath of the Wild came out and that completely skipped Breath of the Wild and Link Between Worlds, I should say, because going back to my rant from a few videos ago, they completely, they're completely non-linear. This game, you have to go to a place where the story tells you to, otherwise you can't get to other areas. Fuck this game, fuck this game, it's awful and linear and shit. Why does that annoy me so much? Why do I put so much, why do I let what people say on the internet about fucking Zelda get to me so much? It shouldn't matter. I like this game. I like this game an awful lot. Who gives? Why am I? Why do I care? It's the box for fucking Skyward Sword, right? See what people do to me, right? And uh, last of my boxes, and this is one of my pride and joys of the Wii of my Wii collection, and uh, definitely one of the highlights of the console in general. The Operation Rainfall games. We got the box for Xenoblade Chronicles, uh, which comes with the red classic controller. We got the box for The Last Story, which uh, would come, what does this come with again? I don't actually remember. Uh, soundtrack, CD, steelbook, art book, the works, and um, also have the box for Pandora's Tower. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to believe that this like Operation Rainfall thing is almost a decade old. And I was like such a strong supporter of it at the time, I was really just like, you better localize these games, Nintendo. And we got them all, and all three of them are superb. I love all three of them so much. And I also have 
this little box set that you could get in the shops that you got with uh, Pandora's Tower, and I actually have the uh, games within it. And it also comes with uh, a little other art book for all three games. And uh, so you got this when you bought Pandora's Tower in certain shops to put your Operation Rainfall games in. But if you registered all three games, see, Nintendo of Europe really caught on to this Operation Rainfall thing and they milked it for all it was fucking worth. But if you registered all three with Club Nintendo, you got this, which is a coin set. And they're always, no, no, it's fine. Club Nintendo coin set and you have a coin for each game right here. Okay. It's not like the the novelty of it does wear off kind of quickly, but it's just the fact that it existed and they like gave you such a cool little feature. You know, it's I love that. So it's like the Operation Rainfall set of games, you know? That's what I call them and I I, I love it. I love it, you know? It's a big reason why the Wii is my favourite console, if I'm honest. Right, now we're gonna go into the loose games here. Um yeah, this is gonna take a while, guys. I hope you're ready. Uh Right, I have this little pile here, actually, that I made a while ago of games that I kept meaning to get round to playing properly. Some of them I did, some of them I didn't, but here we go. Little King's Story. Yeah, I never did beat this game. It is basically a sort of Pikmin game, but also, yeah, in a lot of ways it is Pikmin, you know? Uh, and a lot of people really love Little King's Story, and I've been meaning to go back to it. I played it for like a few hours when I first picked it up, when it first came out, but I just dropped it for whatever reason, but yeah, Little King's Story. It's good shit, it's good, it, I got lots of respect for it, sure. Um, Trauma Center New Blood, this was one of three Trauma Center games that came out for the Wii. I do have the first one around here somewhere, but uh, yeah, I need to get around to this one as well. You know, I wouldn't say I'm a massive fan of the Trauma Center games, but you know, they are good for what they are. Fucking doing surgery on people. Uh, here we go. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna save that for later because I really want to talk about that at some point. Okay, uh, I might as well talk about these together. Here we have a Ghost Squad and we also have Gunblade NY and LA Machine Guns. New York and Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, these are like both uh, arcade real shooter games by Sega that they ported to the Wii. Pretty fucking simple, and they're really good. Uh, yeah, not as good as um, some other light gun games. There was a lot of light gun games on the Wii, for sure, that we're going to get into, but, you know, that was fine. That was fine. Uh, here is, right, Sakura Wars, So Long My Love. Uh, is that the subtitle? Yeah. Sakura Wars, big series in Japan. We got a new one coming out. This was the only one that we got localized in uh, English and... It's like, it came out on the PS2 and in American and European territories they came out with this Wii version. And I tried playing this, but it didn't grab me quite that I really want to get into it, right? But the Wii version isn't that good. It crashed on me a few times. I don't know if it's something wrong with this copy. But yeah, I'm maybe going to opt to try and get the uh, PS2 version at some point. But uh, yeah. Sakura Wars, I love the style of it and the music that I've experienced so far, so definitely a series that I think I could get into, just not on the Wii, sadly. Yeah. But it works if it's your only option, I suppose. Okay. Next up, we got Donkey Kong Country Returns, the game that I absolutely hated at first, because I fucking hated waggling to do your role. Why couldn't it be a button retro, hmm? Is that why you've been not made a game for so long? Because you're too busy trying to figure out why you made Donkey Kong's roll a waggle feature? I'll never let that go, but apart from that one really stupid thing, this game's fucking excellent. Um, I think I prefer Tropical Freeze on the Wii U a little bit, uh, but still really good. So really need to quickly breeze through these again. Uh, right. Klonoa! I love Klonoa. This is a remake of the first game. It's charming, it's really fun, I really like it. <sighs> the Conduit, this was like a first person shooter game and it was, at the time, it was really sort of like made to tout about how much the Wii could keep up in terms of like your sort of gritty first person shooters that really flooded the market at the time. And the fact that it was a Wii game was novel at the time for sure. And it's alright, the controls are really good. Um, it's just not like super memorable or anything like that, but you know, I, I dug it, I dug it. 
maybe play it again, maybe. Rail Shooters, this is the best Rail Shooter on the Wii. House of the Dead Overkill, the best House of the Dead game, in my opinion. The funniest game I've ever played. Absolute bliss, I love it to death. Wish they would, like, make a sequel to that one. Or at least give us, like, a fucking uh, version of um, House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn, which is currently out in arcades. Hopefully we get that soon. Ah. I tried another M. Not, I'll not get into that, but I assure you my opinion is the same as everybody else's. Uh, GoldenEye, another excellent first-person shooter. Uh, real nice follow-up to the N64 original, you know, quite nostalgic in places. And uh, yeah, I, I got little, very little bad to say about it. Much better than The Conduit, I'll say that much. Ah, yeah, Sonic of the Black Knight. In my opinion, probably the second worst Sonic game ever made, okay? Uh, that's actually, I'm, it's just dawning on me how controversial that opinion is going to be. Uh, just behind Sonic 06 as far as I'm concerned. I fucking detest this game, honestly. Everything is good except the gameplay. It's weird. The music, the presentation is all excellent, but the gameplay is just like, fuck this shit. Uh, Cursed Mountain, a sort of like survival horror game. He plays a dude uh, who like tries to claim a haunted mountain. It's pretty good, you know. So, Bit frustrating at times, but it's it's a good example of like a sort of like really unique Wii game, you know, like a game that doesn't have to be necessarily massively AAA or massively polished. It's just niche, and you can appreciate it for what it was. There's a lot of games like that on the console, so which I already talked about. This is a good example. So, yep, um, another like really. In fact, we'll just put that to the side. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh. Skycrawlers, not played this one fully yet. I believe it's, um, what is it? I think it's like uh, based on an anime or something. And uh, it's basically a flying simulator game. And yeah, I need to I need to get around to playing it again, you know? Uh, yeah, but again, another niche game for the Wii. I'm just gonna start labeling them niche game just to basically say it's why the Wii is as good as it is to me. You said Mario Brothers Wii, mm, you know what, I like this game, this is a good game, you know, I know that the new Super Mario Brothers, like, series really got a bad rap, uh, because they kept, like, fucking releasing them, and at the time this was the second one that they brought out, but you know what, the four player multiplayer that they added to this is superb, you know, like, I have memories of, like, going to friends' houses and we just played this and had a drink, and it's like, people complain about how four-player mode doesn't really work, because you're constantly pushing each other or making people commit, making people, like, fall into pits and stuff. That's the point, as far as I'm concerned. That's what makes it so fun, you know, you're sharing a couch with a friend who you just, like, knocked into a pit and killed or knocked into an enemy, and they just give you a shove and you're just laughing, and it's like, it's so good. It's so couch multiplayer greatness, you know? I really, I, I can't, I can't whack this game. I really like it. Okay. Um, Super Paper Mario. A brilliant game, okay? This, it, there's kind of like a line drawn in the sand between like good Paper Mario and bad Paper Mario. Over on the bad, over on the good side you have the original and Thousand Year Door. Over on the bad side you have Sticker Star and Color Splash. And depending on who you talk to, uh, this is either right in the middle or on either side. As far as I'm fucking concerned, it's way on the side of the good games, alright? I even, like, I think I even prefer this to the original Paper Mario, right? I don't know, again, it just gets, like, it just gets, like, brought up a lot of, like, its quality is questioned because it's different, but it doesn't, like, take away- I don't know. I like Super Paper Mario, damn it. Uh, what's this? Uh, Guilty Gear X? Guilty Gear Core. I don't know, it's a Guilty Gear game. I know nothing about Guilty Gear. I probably just got this because it was super cheap. Uh, that's cool. Um, here is uh, Pikmin 2. I believe that you guys in America did not get this, or at least it took a while for you to get. I don't own Pikmin 2 on the GameCube, I just have this. And I never did beat Pikmin 2, I don't think. Uh, which was weird, because I would definitely say it was better than the original. Uh, I should really go back and beat it at some point, but uh, yeah, Pikmin 2, it's cool. Uh, works a lot better on the with the Wii pointer, I'd say, as well. Uh, Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, the sequel to Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Not got around to it yet, but, you know, it's here. It's cool. 
Um, Rune Factory Frontier. Um, I'm still relatively a noob when it comes to Rune Factory. I've played a bit of Rune Factory 1 for the DS. I didn't get too far in it. Um, but I think that this is actually just the first game that's sort of like remade to just be on the Wii. I think. I don't know. I've not popped it in, so let's just leave it at that. Punch Out, brilliant stuff. Uh, really good, like, remake. Is it a remake? I guess it is, but it's good. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz. In my opinion, the third and final great Monkey Ball game. Like, a lot of people don't like this one because I guess it was on the Wii and you had to, like, use the motion controls. It works. It honestly works with the Wii remote, okay? And sure, the option to use an analog stick would have been nice, but it works. And I dig it for that. So I'll always put this in the pile of, like, good Monkey Ball games. Right, now let's get uh, down here. Ah, here we go. Here we got Endless Ocean, and uh, I have Endless Ocean 2 here. Not played Endless Ocean 2 yet, but for fuck's sake, I really need to pop it in and play it because, guys, this game is so good. I have s I spent so much time playing Endless Ocean. It was calming. It was just, like, so laid back, just exploring the ocean, filling up your notebook with all the different fucking fish that you find, the new areas that you would explore, even like the fear I would feel, because you know you're in open water and there's some sharks, you're like oh shit, you know, but you were in no danger, it's just such an emotional game guys, honest to god, 10 out of 10, honestly, another perfect example of why I love the Wii so much, okay, Another perfect example of why I love the Wii so much. I love this game to death. Uh, I'm looking at this in the viewfinder and blob, when it's reversed, is spelt dolled. Dolled. That sounds... that's funny. But yeah, I love this game. I'm really repeating myself more than anything else, aren't I? No More Heroes. Yeah, I didn't like that new Switch game. I don't like the look of it. Can't say I've actually played it. But suffice to say, I think most of us can agree that it wasn't the No More Hero. It was hashtag not my No More Heroes. So, yeah. Uh, another niche game that not a lot of people have played. I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> I like it though. Uh, oh, here we go. Sin and Punishment. I don't think enough people have played this one. And it's really, really good. I'm not even that big a fan of the first Sin and Punishment, which was on the N64. Which was actually widely distributed, because it was on the Virtual Console and all that, so you, there were ways to play it. But this one is so much better. Uh, amazing, like, sort of rail shooter game. Uh, Fragile Dreams, Farewell Ruins to the Moon. Another example of, like, a niche game that just makes me love the Wii so much. A sort of, like cross between a survival horror game and a Japanese RPG that just has a really like emotional WALL-E style story on top of it and yeah it's one of my go-to's for the Wii guys honestly love it love it love it love it uh, <laughs> Mushroom Men the Spore Wars a pretty good 3D platformer by the way like not a lot of people will have heard of this one give it a ch if you're into 3D platformers give that one a try if you if you ever can um, Tales of Symphonia, Dawn of the New World, I liked it, not as good as the first Tales of Symphonia, but it's quite, it's good, it's good. Um, what's this, Bash Party Boom Blocks, um, never popped this in, but I know a lot of people do really like Boom Blocks. Steven Spielberg made this game and it's just like, apparently, a pretty fun puzzle game, so, yeah. It's a thing. Uh, Zack and Wiki. This is one of these games that gets brought up so much as, like, the Wii third-party machine that could have been because it's just such a unique sort of game that only worked on the Wii. And I'm surprised that Capcom haven't attempted to bring this back at some point because it definitely has that reputation of, yeah, I never played it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, it's a um, good game. Good game, Zack and Wiki. Uh, Ivy the Kiwi, by Yuji Naka, even says right there, from the creator of Sonic. Uh, yeah, and it's, again, it's just sort of like, 
It's almost like a game that you would expect to play on your phone, it's that simple, but a lot of fun as well. You know, you just draw a line for Ivy, little bird thing to walk on, and yeah, it works. It's really fun. Um, Mad World. There's my boiler. Uh, yeah, a lot of people know about this one, but probably haven't played it. Uh, just like a really violent manga art style, and it's good. I liked it, even if it was only five hours long. Uh, ah, here we go, Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition. Right now, this is the only version of Resident Evil 4 I own, and it's a damn fine version of it. It's basically the PS2 version, but with Wii controls, and it's hard to go back after playing Resident Evil 4 with Wii, with Wii pointer controls. You know, it just works super well. Um, rabbits Go Home. Probably the only game with fucking rabbits in it that I kind of liked. I have not played... Mario and Rabbids, whatever the fuck that Switch game is actually called, but this one's alright, it's basically a 3D platformer, and uh, with a bit of uh, Katamari Damacy, I'm fucking up that name as well, Rabbids go home! In any other context I would say that to their face. Okay. Another code R, this is a point and click game, and I think this is like a Europe only, Europe and Japan only game. Uh, which really sucks, it was a sequel to a game called Trace Memory on the DS, which was like a really like close to launch game for the DS if I remember correctly. And it's just a little cool little game, you know, and it's very niche as well, so yeah, I'd... thumbs up there, I dig it. And uh, here we have uh, Kirby's Epic Yarn, brilliant game. Not the best Kirby game on the Wii, but a damn good one. Okay. Here we go, Trauma Center Second Opinion, which is technically the first game, but was like remade for the uh, the Wii, so they gave it Second Opinion. I don't have the third Trauma Center game, which was called New Blood, because that was America and Japan only, it didn't come out over here sadly. But yeah, this is the one that I definitely played the most, and it took years to come out in Europe as well. It was like a launch title in America, it was so annoying, because I always wanted to play it. Um, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. It's an important game, you know, you can't deny that. I'm surprised that with the with the Switch kicking so much arse, I'm surprised that they haven't like brought this back yet. I mean, the fucking 2020 Olympics are gonna be in Japan for fuck's sake. You'd think that they would go all out with a new one of these for the Switch. We'll see, I suppose. Could still happen. Um Nights into Dreams, probably my second or third favourite game on the Wii. A lot of Knights fans really don't like this game. I don't see where they're coming from. I fucking love it. Look how serious I am. It's wonderful. Um, Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. I played a fair bit of this, actually, because it was like such a sought-after game for a while, because it, it, it they were going back and forth on whether or not it was going to be localized. And I don't think it was like super successful or whatever, sadly, because it's got all these, like, Japanese characters that nobody knows about, along with all the Street Fighter and Capcom characters, but it was definitely a good game. You know, very Marvel Versus-esque. Better than Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, probably. Uh, Disaster Day of Crisis, another game that was only released in Europe and Japan, made by Monolith Soft, the Xenoblade guys, and go watch my Let's Play. I love this game. Getting to that point where I'm sick of repeating myself. Project Zero Two, another game that was only released in Europe and Japan. Uh, it was very late in its life for the Wii. I think that's maybe why it never got brought out uh, over in America. Uh, but yeah, I think it like used a bunch of the mechanics and stuff that they made for Project Zero Four, um, also known as Fatal Frame, for fuck's sake. Uh, I actually have played Fatal Frame Project Zero Four on the Wii. Uh, I actually hacked my Wii just to play it, and it was really good. It sucks that we never got that game. At least we got this, which is fine. Um, and of course, there were other Project Zero games to follow. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a really good version of uh, Project Zero 2, which is pretty much the best game in the series, honestly. Um, here we go, Kirby's Adventure Wii, also known as Kirby's Adventure in Dreamland. Is that it? In America? But uh, yeah, best Kirby game on the Wii. Love it. Um, Harvest Moon and Magical Melody. I've actually played this one. 
Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It was originally a GameCube game, but they basically ported it to the Wii and they took out a few things and added a few motion control gimmicks, I guess you could say. So, I don't know if this is the best version of the game to play. Uh, plus, it's it's very different from other Harvest Moon games. It's not one of my favourites, I would say, but it's alright. It's alright. Magical Metal Uh Here's Harvest Moon Animal Parade. I'm guessing I've got all of them. No, I, th I think this is the last one, or was there one more on the... Yeah, there's one more. It'll be in here somewhere. Uh, but yeah, I've not popped this one in yet, but I hear it's pretty good. Um, hold on, we'll get to the other one eventually. Uh, Mario Party 9. I don't think I've ever popped this in. It was just like something to own, I guess. Um, Battalion Wars 2. I got it for £13. £12.99. Uh, I don't think I've ever popped this one in either. So, I've got nothing. Um, another super rare game. I respect this, you know, it was an important game. I don't actually own Wii Sports Resort anywhere. At least I don't think I do. Uh, oh fuck, Samba de Amigo, okay. I was a little lukewarm in my Dreamcast video about Samba de Amigo, but this version is fucking awful. It's absolutely fucking unplayable. I love the fact that the Dreamcast had motion control maracas that worked a million times better than the Wii Remote in this version. Fuck this game. Uh, here we are. Oh, fuck. See, we're getting more negative now. This was this was a really disappointing follow-up to Banana Blitz, in my opinion. They added, like, balance board support, so the levels were, like, so much more open and bare and shit, and, yeah, fuck this game as well. Okay, let's hope this next one's positive. Uh, slightly positive. Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics. Uh, I think it's safe to say that this is regarded as the best Mario and Sonic game. A lot of people do seem to really appreciate this one, you know, they really upped the fan service and a lot of the mini games were a lot more fun than just like waggling and whatnot. So yeah, yeah, that's cool to have this. Sound Hill Shattered Memories. I like this game. A lot of people don't. This is the best thing to come out of like Silent Hill uh, since like Team Silent got disbanded after Silent Hill 4. It's the best game, in my opinion. So, yeah. I dig that. Tomb Raider Anniversary. It's a decent version of Tomb Raider on the Wii. The Wii controls are alright. Mario Superstars Tennis. I don't like this one. Not for me. Not Sumo Digital's finest foray into uh, the world of Sega. Uh, right, what we got here? Dead Space Extraction, real sure in the Dead Space universe. Pretty good game. Oops. Um, Mario Striker, what's this? Mario Striker's Charged Football. I think this is called something different in America. I don't know. And I remember I only picked this game up because I don't give a fuck about sports games or that. I only picked this up because it was the very first game in Europe, I believe, that had Nintendo Online. And I remember actually going online with my Wii, and it was like so exciting at the time just to see what it was like, you know? And I barely played a game because I don't like football games, so... There. Uh, Dragon Quest Swords. Don't think I've ever popped this in. Not once, which is weird because now I'm such a big uh, Dragon Quest fan. Sonic in the Secret Rings. You want to hear the most controversial Sonic opinion you will hear all day, probably? At least until some more news about Team Sonic Racing comes out and people say that they're liking the look of it. I like this game. This game's okay. It's not that bad. It really isn't. I don't... I, <laughs> it got good reviews. Well, semi-good reviews when it first came out. But some some time down the line, everybody sort of agreed that, yeah, this game was like one of the worst things that ever happened to the franchise. And I'm like, it's all right. I, I, I even play, I got into a big argument with somebody on Twitter and it coaxed me into actually popping it in my Wii and playing through it. I didn't beat it, I'll say that much. I didn't say it was excellent, but it's all right. I got fairly far and I'm still like, yeah, this isn't the worst thing that ever happened to Sonic. So yeah, it's fucking Sonic in the Secret Rings. It's way better than Sonic the Black Knight. The fact that there are people out there that think Sonic in the Black Knight is better than that game, I'm just, why am I questioning the logic of Sonic fans? It's like, 
We are all messed up. Completely. Alright, oh, here we go. Super Mario Galaxy 1. My favorite Wii game. 100%. Here's Super Mario Galaxy 2, which I brought up earlier. If I may rant a little bit, guys, okay? Super Mario Odyssey has been out for a while, and... One of the things that they really touted about that game was that it went back to the open format of Mario. Nintendo themselves had this like graph where they showed Mario 64, Mario Sunshine. These games were open, and then they had like 3D World and 3D Land and all that to show their linear Mario games and how Mario Odyssey was going back to be more like these games than these games. And what broke my heart about that is that they actually put Galaxy 1 in the like pile of linear games. Now, Galaxy 2 was there as well, and this game I can sort of understand, you know, they took out the overworld, they made it more like checkpoint based and like linear that way, but I honestly feel like Mario Galaxy belongs in the other pile. I think this is a more open Mario game than a linear 3D world style game. Like, am I crazy for thinking that? I don't know, I just remember the, there being so much to explore in the levels, and again, there was an overworld, the Comet Observatory. I feel like people just sort of started putting them in that, putting this game, you know, more associating it with 3D World and all that, because those games started to exist. Had, it, had this been the latest Mario game, especially at the time, nobody would have batted an eye. They would have just been like, oh yeah, this is totally the sequel to Mario Sunshine, for sure. So yeah, I don't know, that's always been a little pet peeve of mine. It's hard to argue because Nintendo themselves said that this is a more linear than a more open style Mario game. So, and uh, I know that, you know, it's funny. I, I should point this out because someone in the comments may point it out. I had this like big rant about Zelda, about how when like a linear Zelda game, a linear Zelda game, that's like awful. That's like the worst fucking thing to most Zelda fans. And I almost have like an opposite effect with this game where I do prefer the more open ones. But I'm- no actually it's the same because I'm saying that those linear Zeldas like Ocarina of Time and Skyward Sword, they're fairly open, you can go different places. It's the same with this one. Folk call it linear because you go at the fucking star, but you can go place- Next game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sonic Unleashed. This is a- this is an alright version of the game, like, more controversial opinions, you know? I really like the HD version of Sonic Unleashed, but this one wasn't that bad either, okay? Even though it was the Sloppy Seconds version. Uh, Sonic Colors, okay. Why am I getting so... oddly political? Why do so many people hate this game now? So many Sonic fans! Like, when they talk about Sonic Colors, they talk about it like it was some massive disappointment. I'm like, where did this opinion suddenly come from? I remember in 2010 when this game came out, folk were like, shocked that a, ga a Sonic game would come out that was th this good. Okay, there was like genuine shock amongst fans and amongst like critics and the like. So, why is it now, in like the current year, that people look back on Sonic Colors and say, Oh yeah, that was a big disappointment. Because it was mostly 2D? That's the only thing I hear. So, yeah, like, fucking... Let's hope. Is there any more controversial games here? Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, fucking linear, again. I love it. Of course I love it, because it's linear, and my taste is shit, apparently. Okay, last pile. We're not even close to done, fuck's sake. Okay. Shadow's Tale, a 2D platformer where you play as a shadow. A pretty unique concept, but the game itself wasn't that great, I felt. Uh, Deadly Creatures, another one of those games that just signifies why I love the Wii so much. Wonderful game, very niche platformer slash combat game. I'm an arachnophobe, but I love it. Harvestman Tree of Tranquility. Not played this one. Uh, not yet, just like Animal Parade. Uh... Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, brilliant game. Beat the Beats Rhythm Paradise, it was like Rhythm Heaven for the Wii. Uh, it was one of the first Rhythm Heaven games I properly played and I really liked it. I got all the way through the game, some really catchy shit in this game for sure. Um, WarioWare Smooth Moves, I think, actually, yeah, I believe the same team makes both the WarioWare and the uh, Rhythm Heaven games, if I'm not mistaken. Because uh, they're both like sort of micro game things, and yeah, this one's good. 
Monster Hunter 3 actually. I should probably show this. Ugh, just a moment, guys. Oh fuck. I really hope I don't make things fall and shit. I actually have this right here. This was like a sort of like collector's edition of Monster Hunter 3 when it first came out. It actually came with like a a pro controller, a black one, and a Wii Speak and a like statue thing. And I don't know, it just seemed I really just wanted the Wii Speak because I thought like the Wii was gonna have like proper like game chat and all that. And I can't say I ever used the Wii Speak ever. And I also can't say I'm really that into Monster Hunter, if I'm honest. I've never really played a game that captured me in that way. Even like Monster Hunter World that just came out. So yeah, Monster Hunter 3. It's pretty cool. Epic Mickey. Never beat this one, actually. I really wish I did, because a lot of people do seem to like it, but not me, sadly. Uh, Okami, the Wii version. This was where I originally played Okami. There's like a million different versions that you can play now, but yeah, this version was really good. Okay. Bit Trip Complete. These were all the uh, Bit Trip games compiled onto a disc. They were all like released on WiiWare, but... I wanted to physically, damn it. That's how I roll. Uh, oh god. Mystery Case Files The Malgrave Incident. This is a hidden object game. Uh, I didn't even know it was a hidden object game when I first bought it. But I bought. then I popped in and I'm like, ah, it's that sort of game. So I can't say I really put much time into it. Not dismissing it or whatever, but yeah, I just went on to something else. The Blob. Uh, who remembers this game? It's actually currently available on uh, current platforms too. Uh, the developers really don't want you to forget about it. And I really liked it here on the Wii when I first played it years ago. It's a good game. It's a really good game. Okay. Secret Files Tunguska. I can't say that. But this is like a point and click game. A fairly mediocre one I'd say. I, I couldn't really get into it that much. But uh, yeah, it's here. Animal Crossing City Folk, I talked about Animal Crossing in my GameCube collection. I'm waiting for a game that really captures me and all that. It definitely wasn't this one. No More Heroes 2. I don't know if I prefer this one or the last one more, but they're both brilliant games. Uh, shame we'll never get a proper No More Heroes uh, 3. Muramasa the Demon Blade. Fucking yes, brilliant game. I love Vanilla Wear. I've really become a big fan of them uh, in recent years. And this was technically my first Vanilla Wear game. I really want to play the Vita version, because the Vita version apparently has like more content and stuff, so maybe one day, but yeah, Muramasa, fucking excellent. And uh, the last game, a bit anticlimactic, but it's Conduit 2! Slightly better than the Conduit 1, I think, but uh, yeah, it was still the Conduit, it was still fairly generic, controlled really well again, but yeah, that, that's it. Right, uh, I hope I haven't left anything out. Just a little scan around my room just to make sure. Uh, I think we're good. That was all the Wii games. That was a really long video. Hope you liked it. And uh, yeah. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.